Well, I've got some meat for you today, friend, and I'm warning you, if you're not uh, in the zone, let me just say that, I really mean this, if you're not in the zone to really uh, uh, lock in, if you're not spiritually or even just mentally able to just really lock in to a meaty word, uh, just do not watch this video. Stop now, come back later when you're hungry for a big bite. If you're already full, this is not the video to watch, all right? But uh, if you're hungry, in fact, if you're one of those crazy wild contenders who's on like day 35, 36, 37 of the, the back 40 fast, this is for you, okay? Or for anyone who's hungry, I want to go into Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, yes. Uh, for those of you who do not know, this is kind of like the pinnacle of, uh, of, of the teaching of the Apostle Paul. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth said that if you could just get into Romans chapter 8, you will be sin-proof and devil-proof, okay? And, uh, and I want to go into, we're going to look at the first eight verses. Now, I can't unpack all of that, but I can promise you this. In the next, whatever this is, 10 minutes, uh, this is going to be a meal. This may not be a one-hour message, but I promise you there is a, a solid hour of meat for you to chew on in this little video. And so you got to be hungry if you, if you want to go here. Uh, but I want to say, too, for those of you who watch this in the next day or two, uh, especially you intercessors, I am in need of some uh, seasoned, uh, some intercessors on Sunday. <clears throat> this Sunday between, say, 3 in the afternoon until evening, going to be doing some, uh, 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 I have an assignment. Anyways, if you are, if that's you and something's resonating, say I want to be a part of that, uh, it would mean being in Drayton Valley on Sunday. Uh, just inbox me, feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. Just email me and uh, I'll uh, bring you up to speed. I need some inter. I am in need of intercessors this Sunday. This, this Sunday. Anyways, okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. Let's look at this, all right? Paul says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Listen to this. This is where I'm getting to, and this is going to be what I emphasize. This is what I'm pulling out. So really focus on these next two statements. He said, For those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. And those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. For it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. All right, and I know that was a mouthful. We're not going to unpack it all. I could spend the rest of my life uh, preaching this. And I'd never pull out all the richness that Paul has packed into those eight scriptures. But what I want to do is pull out a couple and really uh, 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 have you today walking away fully convinced of what you can do, what you could absolutely easily do today to ensure that you are one of those who live in the Spirit rather than living in 
the flesh. That is what you will walk away. You will know, you will get, you'll get to make a decision. I'm going to live in the spirit today or I'm going to live in the flesh today. I'm going to tell you exactly how you make that decision. I want you to notice, first of all, that last verse, verse 8, where he says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, it's really important that you don't feel condemned. In fact, the very first uh, verse in this passage says there's no condemnation, okay, for those who are in Christ Jesus. I don't want you feeling condemned by what I'm about to say, okay? Uh, in fact, it's really important for those who uh, uh, in learn to, that we learn to interpret the scriptures with uh, kingdom lenses and to have a kingdom mindset and to interpret the scriptures in, with, through kingdom lenses, you have to resist the temptation to uh, uh, jump to conclusions when you read the Bible. This is the problem many Christians make is they're always jumping to conclusions. They read one thing, but they think it's saying something else because they take it too far. They jump to conclusions. When Paul says those who are in the flesh cannot please God, don't hear what he's not saying. Okay. He's not saying those who are in the flesh cannot go to heaven, okay? Most Christians live in the flesh. They still go to heaven. If you believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. Hallelujah. You're going to heaven. Good news, okay? I'm not, this does not condemn you to hell. He doesn't say those who are in the flesh cannot be loved by God. He loves all his children. He doesn't say those who are in the flesh cannot be enjoyed by God, all right? God enjoys you. God enjoys us even in our immaturity, just as much as you enjoyed your baby girl, your baby boy, even in their immaturity. We enjoy our children in every stage of their development, not, sorry, development, not just when they're fully mature. God enjoys his children, okay? What he says is, those who are in the flesh can not please God. And that word please is the Greek word arasko. What it really means is to satisfy. It's, it's about uh, meeting a, a need. It's a very deep satisfaction that you will not be able to bring to God unless you learn to live in the Spirit. Okay? Those who live in the flesh cannot satisfy God. You know, uh, another scripture that uses that same word, Oresco, is Mark 6.22, uh, where it's talking about this, this, uh, this beautiful young girl, the daughter of Herodias. She came and danced before Herod, and, uh, and she, it says that he was satisfied, or he was pleased. She was so pleased him with his dancing. It's the same word. She so satisfied him that he actually said to this girl, can you imagine a king being so satisfied? He actually said to this girl in the next verse, ask me for anything up to half my kingdom. But that's a massive, massive offer, okay? Uh, uh, ask me for anything and I'll give it to you. Now that is satisfied. Did you know there was another king who said almost the exact same words? What was his name? Oh, that's right. Jesus. In John 14, 14, he said, ask me for anything in my name and I'll give it to you. I'll do it. Ask me for anything in my name and I'll do it. What? A promise. The problem is most people don't know what it means that in my name part. We think it means to say your prayer right. You know, add in Jesus' name to the end of your prayer and that's the magic word and now God has to answer your prayer. It has nothing to do with how you end your prayer. When Jesus said, ask me for anything in my name, he was talking about entering into his presence, into his glory realm. You see, that's the kingdom. When you enter into the glory, you can ask for anything and you'll do it like that. When you ask outside of the glory, it's not quite as, uh, uh, it's not quite as sure. Sometimes it's a little, it seems a little uh, 
hit or miss. And to be honest, most of my prayers happen outside of the glory realm. Most of your prayers happen outside of the glory. But when we enter into the glory, if you can enter into that realm, that glory realm, that kingdom glory realm, Jesus says, ask me for anything. In that realm, I'll give it to you. What a promise. What a promise. Well, I'll tell you something. You can't ask for anything in his name. You can't ask in the glory. You can't enter into that supernatural realm if you don't learn how to live in the spirit. Okay, you got to learn how to live in the spirit. Those who are in the flesh, or and I think the NIV translates uh, uh, Romans 8, 8 this way, those who are in the realm of the flesh. I like that actually, that, 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 that resonates. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. They can't satisfy God to such a degree that he, he sees your, your spiritual dance and says, ask me for anything in my kingdom, up to half my kingdom, I'll give it to you. All right. So Jesus doesn't even say anything about the half part. He just says, ask me for anything and I'll give it to you. Hallelujah. Friends, you want to learn how to satisfy God. You want to learn how to please the Lord. Paul said in Ephesians 5.10, he says, find out what pleases the Lord and have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. You can't please the Lord if you're living in the flesh. If you're living in the flesh. And so how, here's my question. How is it that we we learn how to live in the spirit versus the flesh? Paul says right there in the middle of this passage in Romans 8. This is verse 5. Verse 5. Okay. Memorize this one. Meditate on this one. This is what he says. He says, for those who are, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Okay, this is not some pie in the sky that's out of your reach. You can do this every single day. You can live in the spirit every single day. This is so attainable. He says, this is how it is. He says, for those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. And those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's that's how this works. Okay. If you set your mind on the things of the flesh, you're going to live in the flesh. And if you set your mind on the things of the Spirit, you are going to live in the Spirit. Which means you get to decide whether you're in the flesh or in the Spirit simply by deciding what channel you're going to set your mind on. Just like I always imagine one of those old television sets. Click, 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 and you choose your channel. You've got to choose your channel. And you choose your channel every single day. Today, when you're driving to work, you set your channel. You decide if your mind is just going to wander and do nothing or if you're going to listen to the Word of God. Maybe you're going to put on some worship and love Him. Maybe you're going to memorize a passage of Scripture. How about Romans 8, 5, 8, 6, 8, 8? Hello? You can choose to set your mind on the things of the Spirit. This is why Paul says, you know, uh, in in, uh, Philippians uh, 4, he says uh, um, to to, uh, whatever is good, whatever is right, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, uh, if anything is excellent, he said, think on these things. Focus your mind. Fix your mind on things that are good, that are right, that are, you know, set your mind on, Paul says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We've got to choose what we're going to set our mind on. And if you'll set your mind on the things of the Spirit, okay, the Word of God, worship, prayer, meditation, if you choose to set your mind on Him, what the natural thing that's going to happen is your spirit is just going to get filled. Your spirit is going to be full. Your flesh gets weaker and you enter into that spirit realm. And this is a choice that we make every single day. It's not like, you know, you think of who your, who's your favorite preacher or whatever and they seem so spiritual, seem so this. These aren't people who were born walking on water. These aren't people that were born just passionate about the Holy Spirit. I don't wake up every single day just 
burning on fire for God. I choose every day. I chose at five o'clock this morning to drag my butt out of bed and to get on the road and go for a drive. And I find that I meditate really well when I'm driving. So, I mean, I'll drive. I drove an hour and a half to buy a cup of coffee and then I'll drive home. Three hours of driving because I meditate well. And I, I, I just I just get pulled up. I just get pulled up. When I meditate on the word while I'm driving, I just get pulled up. And so I go for a drive or that's because it's a rainy day. When it's not, I go for a walk in the woods because it just brings me to life. But I choose to do that. I choose to set my mind on things above. And when I choose to do that, I enter into the spirit and I can be pleasing and satisfying to the Lord. And then he can look at me and say, okay, boy, you're moving my heart. You're killing me here. What do you want? Ask me for anything and I'll do it. Oh, friend, do you feel it? Do you, do you hear the invitation? Come, come to me. It's your choice. You can come to me, the Lord says. You just have to choose to set your mind on something else. Do you really need to watch that stupid television show every single day? Do you really need to be scrolling through that social media? It's just filling your soul with garbage. Do you really need to read that garbage magazine? Do you really need to finish that book that you started? What's that putting in your soul? What are you setting your mind on? Those who are in the flesh can not please God. Think about it. Think about it. God bless you, friend. I hope that helped you. And if you haven't already, uh, be sure to sign up. Join our Oil Patch Pulpit community. These messages are not going to get to you easily uh, if you don't join that community. And you'll also find out about little secret gatherings I'm having and different things. If you're on our list, uh, just email me at feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. Say, Steve, I like your stuff. We'll put you on the list. And if you live near enough to Drayton that you'd be willing to drive to Drayton Valley for one of our gatherings or prayer meetings or uh, gatherings this summer, just mention that in the email and uh, I'll make sure I put you on our, our list of people that we send out those invitations to. God bless you. We'll see you soon.